Hello everyone, welcome to the workshop. I'm Ronald from Tamco. Today I will teach you how to solder your business card. Well, my business card, but I give it to you through my retailers. When you open your panel box, you should receive that business card with it. There are actually seven different versions, but we're gonna build the rework today. These business cards have all my info on one side, and on the other side you have all the footprints for the different components. You just have to order what you want. Uh, the bill of material is available on my website. Just check the description and you'll get uh, right to it. Well, I had another version of those uh, before, but I decided to rework them so that they are very prettier first and easier to build as well. So today is the process for the second version. It's easy to catch which version is which because uh, the second one just has a QR code on it and the first one doesn't. So now let's just see how to solder everything. So you heard me right. Today we're gonna build a river pedal. This is the river business card, it just has one knob here. Here you have all my info if you wanna call me or just go to the website with a QR code. And on the other side, you have all the space for the components here. So, let's start with the flatter components, the small one. Uh, resistors and diodes. So, there is no diode here, but if you have diode on your, um, on your um, business card, that's the time to solder it. Be careful, because diodes have a cathode and an anode, so they have a direction. Let me show you. You can't just put it randomly, you have to match the PCB with the diode as well. So diodes have a little black band here called the cathode. It's like the minus, the current flows from the anode to the cathode, from right to left here. So you have to match the cathode mark, the black band, with the band found on your PCB if you have one. So this one doesn't have uh, a cathode, let's do without it. Doesn't have a diode, sorry. So let's do without it. First, we need to solder the resistors. So let me show you. Let's solder the first one, which is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor here for the LED. Resistors uh, range from a few ohms to uh, like 1 million ohms, mega ohms, in fact. So that's what you have here 10k for 10 kilo ohm, um, 330k for 330 thousands ohm. So basically the same thing, uh, 560R, 560 ohm, 1 meg is 1 million ohm. So you have a, a full range of different values available, and they all have some impact on the sound. So be very careful at putting the right component in the right place, because otherwise it will not work. So to solder resistors in place, you put your soldering iron in contact with both the pad and the leg of the resistor, and put a tiny amount of solder in it, there it melts, and just slide it along the component leg. That way, all the excess solder will go as well. And you can just take a cutting plier and cut the legs. And here you have two good solder joints. If you cut too flat, you will break the solder joint. So you just have to reheat, like this, just put the soldering iron, and it should be done. If you made a mistake because the component value was not the right one, you can use a soldering pump, just load it, melt and press, and there you should desolder it. Try a few times because it's not easy on the first try. Or you can use a soldering braid like this and just put it in contact and press with a soldering iron to heat it up. Be careful not to heat yourself up as well. So now you need to put all the other resistors. So that's what I'm gonna do, but before I wanna show you how to put uh, the IC here. So you can just plug the IC and solder it, it will work. Be careful about the, the uh, direction it's facing. But you can also use a socket, and that's what I'm gonna do. You can order online, it's an option. These sockets. So you see there is like a hole here, uh, looking like a half moon. And you have a small um, a, a, a square pad here and a small symbol here. So you just have to match it, place it, hold it in place, and you take your solder and just solder one pad here. And now 
it just stays on the wall. So you can go to the other side, I think the time to solder the seven remaining pads. If you need to clean up your soldering iron, you can either use those brass uh, type of sponge, just like this, or you can use a moist sponge. So this one is dry, just moist it, uh, humidify it, press it so that it's not wet, and then you can just rub your soldering iron on it. I'm gonna solder all the other resistors here, and we'll see how to do the condon the uh, capacitors and uh, a few integrated circuits as well. Later. So in order to insert resistors here, you have to apply, uh, just bend, sorry, the uh, two legs here. So this one is color coded to be 3303, so 330 thousands, uh, it's 10 power of 3. And just bend it, place into the pad, press it, and make sure it's tightly fit on the circuit board. And just do that for a week every resistor on the board. Resistors are color coded so you can find them, find the color code online or in the building document linked in the description of the video. And it should be enough to help you build the whole thing. Actually, the building document doesn't have a French accent, so it's also helpful in that way, I guess. Uh, good luck otherwise. Six hours later. Now, all the resistors are done, the IC socket is put in place, we can go to the move on to the capacitors, but first, just a reminder: uh, you can use lead-free solder. So this one does not contain lead. Um, you can also use a leaded solder, but be really careful about the temperature of your soldering iron because it's not the same for both. Um, I recommend lead-free solder. They are harder to build with, but um, it's less dangerous for the for yourself first and for the environment as well. So be careful about what you're using. Do not heat it up too much. I use 400, and, uh, 400 degrees Celsius for lead-free and 350 degrees for lead solder. Lead solder. So now let's move on to the capacitors. This one just used two film time capacitors. One is 1.5 nanofarad, so that's like 1.5 uh, billionth of a farad. 10 power minus 9 here, and one more 100 nanofarad. If you just follow what's online in the build documentation, you get everything you need. So don't need to worry much. Here. And it also uses a couple of 22 microfarad, so these ones are a bit different. These are electrolytic capacitors, whereas the first one were film caps. The difference is how they are built. Electro electrochemical, well, electrolytic, sorry, capacitors. These ones, I'm gonna put in place. They are they are oriented as um, like diodes, basically. So you have a cathode mark here, a, a gray band with the minus sign, and the leg is shorter for the minus and positive side is longer. So you take the positive one, you check on the, the PCB that you have a plus sign, and put it in. It's a square pin anyway, square pad. Just put it in. So be careful with the orientation of the component. Film capacitors like these ones, and ceramic capacitors for smaller values. Then it do not need to be oriented, so you can put it both ways, it works. But those ones, they do need to face the right direction. Otherwise, you can just blow up, and you do not want that. Soldering is exactly the same. Just put your soldering iron in contact with the pad and the leg, then put solder in it, and slide along the component leg. Six months later... Now we still have two things to put. Well, um the uh, regulator here, the voltage regulator. I'm not really a big fan of what I used here, so a, a couple of cards will have a really tightly spaced um, regulator here, and the other ones, and all the next one basically, will have the pins way 
uh, ahead, well um, away from each other, so that you can't solder both at the same time and make a short circuit. So let's put it in place. Be really careful if, if you see that you don't have lots of space, because you do not want to make a short circuit at all. So let's see. This is a voltage regulator here. Oh, yeah, just check that it's all right. Five volts, yes, five volt. So let me put it in place. I'm gonna bend the legs here. And be really careful about not short circuiting all the connections. It's not an easy task. One, two, and three. So this one is probably a bit hard to do as a first pedal, but it should work anyway. So now you don't have a short circuit, it's, it's correctly soldering. At that point, on the reverb business card, you want to solder in the BTDR Belton brick, which does the reverb. But I don't want to do it now. So let's first, let me first find where I put them. Four to six weeks later. Here it is. Found it. I just completely forgot what I put it. So, this is a Belton reverb brick. Digilog reverb. Nice. It goes on the other side, so just put it in and solder it in place, and you're done. Do not put it here, you won't have the space anyway. So, solder on the other side. I won't actually solder it because I want to reuse it later on, but you just plug it in, flip it, solder the pads here, and you're done. Instead, to check it out, I'm gonna use something else called headers. This. Now I need... Yeah, perfect, this one. So this is a 6-pin header, and I'm gonna put it on the other side so that I do not have to solder the belt on brick directly. I can just fit it in like this and it should work right away. So let me solder it in place, and I'll show you how to do the rest of the pedal. Nice. So. I'll put it in later on, but you see that it fits. So, perfect. Now, let's put the 3PDT here. I highly recommend using the Daily Well switches, these ones. But just for the test, I've ordered an Alpha one. So I can try it out as well. The Daily Well are cheaper than Alphas and they do work quite well. So be careful, these are the pins. You see that you have to hold it horizontally instead of vertically, because it, it will not fit otherwise. Just put it in. Oh, by the way, remove all the hardware. Here. You'll put it later on. Just put it in, flip the board, and solder it in place. If you see that you have too much solder, you can just heat it up, a, no, um, sorry, heat it up again and slide the soldering around to remove all the excess solder. There you have it. Now let's put the, so the ice in the socket. It's a TL072. It's a dual amplifier, dual operational amplifier, like this one. Or this one here. So to know which direction you have to put it, just look at it. You see that there is a dot somewhere, like here, on the top left corner. You have to insert this dot, uh, to, to, sorry, to, you have to put the component so that the dot matches the half moon shape here. So, in that case, it's like this. Press it, and you're done. It's placed in it. Now you need to put the wires. So for the wires, uh, a few centimeters will be nice. Just use the same color code as me, and you won't make any mistake. I use black wires for ground. I need three of those. One, two, three. For signal wires, input and output, you need another color. 
so I just use white. And for the 9 volt, I highly recommend using the red wires. Here, automatic wire stripper, it's much easier than like this. There you have it. Now you need to just insert, so you have the input on the right, output on the left, like in a guitar pedal, and the 9 volt is on the top. So ground goes in the ground. Ground pins for components and wires, you need to heat them up a bit longer because they are connected to the ground planes, so the, the ground plane will actually absorb the heat and dissipate it instead of heating up and keeping the same temperature as your iron, so it's a bit harder to solder in. Just be patient, take your time, try to do good solder, solder joints, sorry. Ten seconds later. The ground pins will dissipate much more, you need to heat them a bit longer, it's perfectly normal. Also the solder needs to look shiny a little bit, uh, sometimes they are not because some either it's uh, badly down, which can happen on lead solder and silver based solder. This one does not contain either lead or solder, just copper and well basically the solder alloy. And um, this one will not look shiny because it doesn't contain either lead or solder. Here you have it. Here you have it. The PCB with the wires. Now let's do the potentiometers. You cannot order right angled potentiometers and put them in because they do not have the right height, so you need to use wires. Just strip three wires, three centimeters long approximately. One, two, and three. Here. And I'll show you how to solder them in place. Now, time to use potentiometers. So this one is a, a 100k potentiometer. So it's basically like a resistor. You have a resistance between pin 1 and 3, left and right one. So in this case it's 100 kilo ohm, 100k. And you have here a cursor going over from top, from the left pin to the right pin. So completely to the left, counterclockwise. Pin 1 and 2 are connected, completely to the right, clockwise. Pin 2 and 3 are completely connected. And in between you have a curve. If it's linear, the potter is written B100K. In that case, it means like, um, at the main point, 50%, you have equal resistance from the middle to the right, and to the, from the middle to the left, and from the middle to the right. Here it's A100K, which means it's, it's an audio or logarithmic potentiometer. C stands for reverse log, so it's the same, but instead of doing a slope like this, it's doing a slope like this. Uh, it's just, you have all the resistance happening on the first, maybe for the first uh, quarter of the turn, instead of having it on the last quarter of the turn. It's a bit different, just, just do the right one, okay? <laughs> So, you can either just make a hook with your wire, place it and solder it uh, against the table, so you hold it like this and it just drops against the table. You can use a third hand like this, which is a bit easier. So, you take your wire, make a hook with it, and let it stand on the potentiometer. Then solder them in. When it's done, you remove the nap, so you remove the pot, and you cut the excess of wire on the other side. You can now solder it in, like this. 
three knives, so it's not always the same uh, size, unfortunately. And not that good. And voila, it's done. Now time to fit it inside the box. So I'm just gonna bend a little bit the wires so that you can have some spring action. And I'm gonna take the box. There it is. And now, first thing you need to do is to install the DC jack in it. You put it in and you screw it in with its nut. So I'm placing it like this, if you want to do exactly the same. This pin will be center negative, black wire to ground. This one on the right will be the external pin, which is positive plus 9 volt. I'm using a pair of flat pliers to it in place. There, it shouldn't move now. Now, what you need to do is to put the board in the right direction. So it will be placed like this and solder in the two wires. So the external pin is positive, and the outside diameter or the outside connection of the connector. third pin is unused, it's meant to be used with battery only, so we are not going to use it now. And this is the crown, center negative, like most guitar pedals, so you can pour it up with your usual guitar power supply. Now it's done, you just have to bend a little bit the board so that the you can have access to this the potentiometer. Put it in, so this is going like this, and hold the potentiometer in place with a finger, flip it. Put, oh sorry, I forgot to mention, now it's a good time to do it. Potentiometers have a little tab here, you need to remove it. Just use your pair of favorite pliers and clip it away. So you just put it and bend like this twist it, it should just cut. Otherwise it wouldn't mean you need another hole to fit it in. It's meant to be used for when you have a, like a really precise CNC machine and you have made a square cut in your board, uh, in your um, enclosure, sorry, so that the potentiometer does not move when you screw it in. Now it's firmly standing in place. I just flip the board. Sorry, I use first the hardware spring here. Flip the board. Press it. Now you can use the washer and one of the two nuts provided. You just need one, not two. So here it goes. And now it's it's completely still. It does not move anymore. Now it's time to put in the jacks for input and output. So you can solder them um, directly outboard, then fit them in if you prefer. But I won't because I'm lazy. So I'm gonna fit it in. Most of the time you want the jack to make contact with the enclosure, so what you can do is use this kind of tool to just remove the paint inside, if you want. Uh, I won't do it here, but you can. Because it's making a connection from the ground to the jack, then to the enclosure itself, which makes it act as a giant shield protecting your device from outside interferences. Outside interferences, sorry. 
up, here it goes, another one. So be careful not to tighten them up too much, otherwise they would break. They should not be in contact with the board at all, otherwise you'll make a short circuit. And you can now solder the signal ground, uh, sorry, the signal wire and the ground wire into the jacks, input and output jacks. So when you have the this uh, spring action metal stuff, it's the tip, which is the signal here, and the small one here is the ground. I'm going to try to solder them in place correctly without damaging it. Here it goes. One, two, one. And two. So I strongly suggest you use a color code for the wires and that you put the input and output jack the same way as I do so that you can compare your board to mine and you'll know if it works or don't or, don't, or doesn't work, sorry. So I'm going to solder it correctly here, here. Last one is a tricky to access, but that's okay. Good. Now I cut the excess of wire. Perfect. So in my case, I need to put it inside right now, which means I can't close the lid because it's way too tall, I think. Yes, I can. So I won't, but you will in the end. Now you need to put the knob you want to use. I've decided to use a huge knob here. Let me take it first. A white... Uh, do I have a white one? I have like beige ones. Yeah, it's alright. I guess I could have chosen whiter. Well, all right, let's do this one. It's better. A white Big Muff by Russian style knob. Good. So you put it. You put your pot to the minimum. Press the wire. Then screw it in place. There it is. Here you go. Here you have it. That's a reverb pedal. Let's try it out. I'm thanking Swan Vaud, French guitarist, for providing me the guitar loops I'm going, I'm going to be using. He doesn't know it yet, <laughs> but he will discover it. Power supply. I'm using a laboratory power supply because they are the cleanest on the planet. And when you plug it in... Oh, sorry. I forgot the LED. Nice. So last thing to do before plugging it in, well, fortunately you can do it right now. I forgot to tell you to do that, but choose your LED. I'm going to use this one. You have on the PCB a square hole with a plus sign and a round hole with no sign at all. The long leg of the LED goes to the plus and the short one goes to the minus. Let me show you on a ball that's not soldering actually. Here, well it's a, another one, a different one, but it's the same basically. So you have here the LED. You can put it inside before actually flipping the board. Here you go. The plus here goes to the longer leg and the minus goes to the shorter leg. And when it's done, you put the LED holder, 
press the LED, the LED against the LED holder and solder it in place. Let me show you. So, fortunately, it's not too late. I'm seeing. I think you don't see it. You won't see it. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So you have the the square and the round holes. Roll the, pa the pads here. See for the LED. You just insert the long length into the square one and the short one into the round one. Then choose your favorite, the LED LED holder. Like this. So this one, it's not fixed. If you just um, hold it, you see it's not fixed. So you can either use some hot glue to keep it in place or use the LED itself. You just have to push it that it clicks. Now the LED is inside it. You hold it firmly and bend the, L the legs of the LED. And it's holding it in place. Let's solder it. Oh, yeah. I turned it off. Let's wait for my soldering iron to heat up. And now, just solder the LED in place. So now let's test it for good. You see that it, it's lighting up? Oh, that's, good. that's a good sign. Some volume. Engaged. Slight volume boost. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, just subscribe to the channel, even though I guess the rest of the videos will be in French. Sorry. Um, otherwise, you can just uh, share it online, comment if you need anything. I will try to answer everyone. Uh, it's not easy, I know, because I have a lot of work, but I'll do my best. And uh, if it doesn't work, if you need to debug things, well, just head over to a different uh, website which are specialized in do-it-yourself products like do-it-yourself audio or uh, Facebook groups as well. You may find uh, quite a lot of fun about guitar pedals. So have fun and uh, hopefully it works.